as promised, this is the more detailed version of my unit circle video. In the first video, I went through and got all these values that you see on your screen. We have X and Y coordinates in black, degrees in red, radians in green. And I promised that I would go back and sort of explain how we got all of these fraction values, the, these X and Y values. They're pretty strange. Radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, 1 half. So in this video, that's the objective. I'm going to really kind of show you that every time that you get a value, it comes back to this idea that we have these reference triangles, right? We understand, hopefully, that the unit circle has a radius of 1. All right, so this length right here is 1. This length right here is 1 and so on and so forth. This is one from here to here. So that tells me, if we're going to use a 30 degree angle in here, that tells me that a special right triangle is being formed. If I look at this thing, it's a special right triangle. It's a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So if I take that idea down here, right? And I've got my three triangles. This one's going to be a 30, 60, 90. This one's going to be a 45, 45, 90. And this one's also going to be a 30, 60, 90, just in a different uh, orientation. The hypotenuse in every case is one. That's the radius of our unit circle. So we have to go back and sort of remember our special right triangles. Our special right triangles were two types of right triangles. One was a 30, 60, 90. The other was a, an isosceles, a 45, 45, 90. And each one had a very easy ratio of sides. No, so no matter how sort of big or small that each triangle is, if they're 30, 60, 90, they have to follow, the sides have to fall into this ratio that I'm going to tell you right now. And the ratio of sides in a 30, 60, 90 is 1, 1 times radical 3, and then 1 times 2. So for example, let me erase this hypotenuse just for a second, just to kind of recap here. The side across from 30, if that were 1, the side across from 60 would be 1 times radical 3, or just radical 3, and then the hypotenuse would be twice as big as the smaller leg. Similarly, if this were 7, across from the 60, the longer leg would be 7 times radical 3. Across from the hypotenuse, excuse me, across from the 90 degree angle, the hypotenuse would be 2 times 7. All right, and that is how the extended ratio works, the ratio of sides in a 30, 60, 90. The problem with that is sometimes the given side is not sort of what you want it to be. And we're going to see that especially with this 45, 45, 90. So the given side we know is across from the right angle. It's 1. That is what we know for a fact right now. In our unit circle, the hypotenuse of all of our reference triangles is always 1. Well, if you think about it, the hypotenuse is twice as big as the shorter leg. This is the shorter leg, the short leg of our 30, 60, 90, and this is the long leg. So if the hypotenuse is twice as big as the short leg and it's 1, then that stands the reason that this would be half as big as 1, or 1 half. All right, and this right here would be the long leg is always the short leg times radical 3. So if I take this down here and I simplify that, 1 half times radical 3 is simply radical 3 over 2. So that's where we get those values from. So if I put them back into my picture now, I put them back into my picture, I've got one half as my short leg, and I've got radical 3 over 2 as my long leg. And now let's revert back to our unit circle. Let's remember those values, and we'll go back to our unit circle. So across from 30 is one half. I'll put it in pink, so it's one half. Across from 60 is radical 3 over 2. All right, And this coordinate, this point, has coordinates 
x comma y. So we're going over from our origin, we're going over radical 3 over 2 units, and we're going up 1 half units. That's where these values come from. And the beauty of this unit circle, and we're going to get to this in a sec, and maybe in our next video, is that if we want to find like the sine of 30 degrees, right? We know from a previous video that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosines adjacent over hypotenuse, tangents opposite over adjacent. So the sine of 30 degrees is going to be one half divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is one. So the sine of 30 degrees is one half. The cosine of 30 degrees, if I want to find that, the cosine, let me write that better, the cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent, adjacent, so it's right here, radical 3 over 2, over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 1, so it's just radical 3 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. So in our unit circle, every single time, the y value is going to be your sine and the x value is going to be your cosine every single time so cosine comma sine that's how we generate all of these values and we're making connections now between sine cosine and the unit circle when we get to tangent the tangent of an angle the tangent of 30 degrees, well that's just simply equal to, tangent is defined as sine over cosine. So in this case the sine is one half and the cosine is radical three over two. So you just have to simplify that. One half over radical three over two. One half over radical three over two. I'm gonna change that into a horizontal. One half divided by radical three over two keep it, switch it to multiplication, flip it over. The twos cancel, leaving us with one over root three. I'll take it over here, one over root three. We can't leave it that way, so let's rationalize. You can never have radicals in the denominator, we wanna get rid of that. So the tangent of 30 degrees is radical three over, radical three times radical three is just three. So the tangent of 30 degrees, or pi over six radians, is radical three over three units which is kind of interesting. So that's where that's the 30, 60, 90. Let's go to the 45, 45, 90. Let me erase all this stuff. The 45, 45, 90 is an isosceles right triangle. I'm actually going to pause it and erase. All right, I've erased. Now I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is next. This is an isosceles, which means the legs are both the same. This distance and this distance are both the same. Remember, our hypotenuse, our radius of a unit circle is one. So let's take that down here and recall in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The ratio of sides should be one, one, they're the same, and then one times radical two. So in other words, if this were 8, this would be 8, and then this would be 8 radical 2. Simple as that. All right, in this case, the hypotenuse, though, is given to us as 1. And that poses a bit of an issue. When we go down here and actually try to figure out these values, all right, they're going to be kind of challenging. So let's work it out this way. Let's say... Let's write it down in words. The leg of an isosceles right triangle is, if it's one, right, then the hypotenuse is the leg times radical two. So the hypotenuse is the leg times radical two. Well, if we know the hypotenuse is one, I'll put that there. The leg, let's call x times radical two. We want to figure out the length of the leg, so let's divide by radical 2. So it's 1 over radical 2. You can't leave it that way, so we have to rationalize. Let's multiply top and bottom by radical 2. So we get radical 2 over 2. That's where those values are coming from. Both the legs are the same, radical 2 over 2. So up here, this is radical 2 over 2. And right here is the same. 
So when those legs are radical 2 over 2, the hypotenuse is 1. So if I take that back up here, I've got radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. And you can see I've gone over radical 2 over 2, and I've gone up radical 2 over 2 to get to this point. Over and up, the same value. So if I ever ask you what the sine of 45 degrees is, well, the sine, as you know, is opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. It's radical 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. It happens to be the same. The tangent of 45 degrees is sine over cosine, which is just 1. So there you go. Let's go and do the final one. Again, I'm going to pause it and erase all this other stuff. So the last one we want to talk about here is this reference triangle. All right, we've got ourselves a 60 degree angle here in red. You can see it's 60 degrees. Remember our radius is 1. And I'm going to explain to you how we get 1 half and radical 3 over 2. So let's take this down here. It's 30, 60, 90. This time the theta, though, is 60 degrees, not 30 degrees. And if I take this, I go 30, 60, and 90. Remember, it's 1, 1 radical 3, and 2. So in this case, the only value that I'm given is the hypotenuse. Well, this looks exactly like this one. It's precisely the same. The triangle is just kind of in a different way, right? So if the hypotenuse is 1, then the short leg is 1 half, and then this is radical 3 over 2. All right, so across from 30 degrees this time is across from 30 degrees is one half, so that's here, and then this is radical three over two. All right, and if you put this in your calculator, which you rarely are going to do, but you would definitely get a bigger value than one half. Radical three divided by two is larger; it's longer than one half, and you can see that this is a longer side than 0.5. This right here is a longer side than 0.5. All right, so let's take that back up here. Radical 3 over 2 is longer than 1 half. All right, so we're going over 1 half and up radical 3 over 2. So same deal here. If we said the cosine of 60 degrees, well, that's adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 1, so I'll just leave it like that. The sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. It's radical 3 over 2. And you'll notice that the cosine of 30 degrees and the sine of 60 degrees, these are the same values, which is kind of interesting. So there you go. There is more of a detailed explanation into the unit circle, right? That was just quadrant 1. All of these over here, though, if you wanted to in quadrant two, if you wanted to draw yourself a reference triangle, that's not a very good hypotenuse, but you get my point. If you want to do this, right, this would be 60 degrees. This right here would be radical three over two. This would be one half. But since we're going in sort of the left direction, that's kind of like where we get the negative from. That's all. So it's still up radical three over two, but in the left direction, the distance is one half, but since we're going left from the origin, left on, an, on, a, uh, on a coordinate plane is negative. So this angle right here, right there, is 90 plus 30. So that's 120 degrees. So if I ask you the cosine of 120, the cosine of 120, all you would do is you would think about this reference triangle the cosine, remember, is the x value of that point on the terminal side. So it's negative 1 half. All right, so we'll get more into this stuff in, uh, in some subsequent videos. But, you know, the, the cosine of an angle is simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right, so we'll talk more about reference angles and, and you know, this whole idea of, of all students take calculus. That'll be a, uh, a way to tell whether the answer is going to be positive or negative. 
but uh, for now I think that pretty much covers it you know if you wanted to go down here to quadrant three and quadrant four you know those same triangles are going to continue to appear every time All right, you're just going to create this reference triangle from the origin and the triangles either 30 60 90 or a 45 45 90 so uh, hopefully that helped you know we're going to really sort of tackle some more trig stuff over the next couple videos but you know uh, make sure you subscribe and if you have any comments just ask below thanks for watching